So now on the test board, you can see that the motor is running on this car. The wheels are moving. And we're going to check for codes. We got ready up here. And I'm going to go into the scan tool to make sure we got no codes. And it tells us absolutely no codes. Now, I'm going to make a fault in this car because I'm going to show you how you need to diagnose this vehicle and what you need to do. So I make a fault. Notice right now we got a P3009 high voltage leak. Now, some vehicles as this one and this company that makes this, they're out of Germany. Their old system worked like many cars did, where it would shut it down. But we wanted to also show them, or they did, I should say, wanted to show some cars that are realistic. They'll run, but you got a code, you got loss of power, you got maybe AC not working, some issue. So once you get a code like this, here's what we got to do. We got to get our meter. We're going to shut the key off. We're going to take our test leads and we're going to put our meter on DC volts. We're going to go into the black common and into the red here. Now we're just like going to use it like a regular voltmeter. We're going to check our battery. Oh, I got to get on this side so you can see. And we got 12 volts. That way we know our system is working well. Okay. Now we need to say we got 12 volts at the battery. To run this test, I got to depower the car. So first thing is we take our gloves out. I told you we're going to do this. We're not going to use glove dust because it'll just make a big mess. But you get gloves and you put some glove dust, not powder. You put the glove on and your hand needs to be measured for the right glove. You're then going to put the covers on and these are special 1000 volt covers. We're going to put this on like you want to see me put a glove on, right? But we're going to put this on and for the sake of time, I'm only going to use one glove. You're going to need to do two. So the first thing we want to do is you can disconnect the 12 volt power. That way we know we got no 12 volts. My negative cable is removed. Take the key out of your ignition, should have been first, that's second. Next thing we're going to do is here's our switch. I'm going to lift up, take it out, I'm going to take this. Now as you're doing this, this is called a lock box. You could take it and go put it in your toolbox. I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to put the keys in here for safety. I'm going to get that, put it out of the way. And now what I'm going to do is make sure we got no power anywhere. So this would be your inverter cover. And remember, we got an isolation fault. So now with my lead still hooked up this way, I'm going to go positive and negative and make sure I got nothing. All right, I got nothing. I'm on, I'm on down here, and I got, I don't know if I can get my hands out of the way here, but I have absolutely no power on the meter. That's good. Now that I'm done with that, your, your connection to a inverter or whatever uh, would be disconnected. But now we got to diagnose the high voltage. So we come up here. I could take my glove off, okay, and you got motor generator one, motor generator two. This is UVW. This is the inverter UVW, so the wires, if we took the cover off, like simulating there, I need to change my meter. I need to take this lead out and the black lead. I don't need the black lead anymore. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to take this lead and I'm connecting it here to the high voltage end. I'm using this special setup that has a button right here that I can press and get power out of and I plug this into the meter. 
Now also, I'm going to take my meter and move it to the high voltage setup. And I'm going to show you something here being connected to nothing. My meter is on 500 volts. Could they see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now watch when I press the button. 500 volts, 500 and 500 uh, million ohms, excuse me, and 528 volts. So now I got to test my motors. I start with motor generator one. This would be the ground. And don't be confused because I'm using a red lead. That's how this meg ohm meter is set up. The red lead is in here. That's your connection point. Okay. Now, I double test again to make sure I could put that power out. I'm going to go here from the inverter and see what that meter reads. 550. That means I don't have a short. Ooh, of course, doesn't help if my lead just fell back out. Now I'm going to do the next one. And 550. I'm going to do it again. So now all three phases of motor generator one are good. I have absolutely no problem. Now let's go to motor generator two. And I'm going to check out the inverter end. Uh-oh. Look at that meter. What are we reading? Pull in on that meter. You see that low voltage? We got a problem. Now look, if I take it out of the hole, now I don't have a short. That wire is shorted. Now I'm going to go to the next phase. That is shorted as well. And then do the third phase. So all three phases are shorted. Now, it could be just shorted in the motor, or we could test it from the inverter. Show them this part right here, the inverter. I can't, I don't know if they're seeing that. There you go. So I would check it from here, and if the reading is the same, okay, then I know the wiring from here to the motor is bad, which it is. That is bad. That is bad. And that is also bad. So just zone in on that meter. So on a real car, excuse me, you would be doing the same exact thing. We would want no connection. And I do want to say this as well. This is a big problem. You would go on a real vehicle, take the inverter cover off after you depowered the car. Does everyone understand that? The next thing you would do is you can go from these inverter wires like I did, and here, motor generator one's good, all three of them. But if I go to motor generator two, and I see this, here's going to be my next step. I'm not condemning the motor yet. Why? Maybe there's a problem for the connection up here. Maybe there's something shorted here. So what am I going to do? I'm going to unbolt these wires, okay, to make sure, and this would be maybe the unbolted version of it, because you're not going to take the whole motor out, not at this point. And if I went here and I had five something, my wire is shorted, okay? If I go here and I, I look at it, the wire is shorted, and sometimes you could have a short just from one particular winding to the other winding, sometimes it's the ground. We had one, I wrote a great article, I write for Motor Age magazine. Tony was a past editor, by the way, of the magazine. But anyway, I write for the magazine and we always have hybrid articles. One I wrote is really good on isolation problems. It was a real vehicle, and this thing is still running great. It's a Ford Escape Hybrid. We had to change the wire from the back battery all the way to the front. Cost me over 1200 bucks just for the wire. My cost, never mind the customer's cost. We have a TST big event. TST is a non-for-profit group. We have our big event usually in, per in person with 700 people. Um, this year, it'll be virtual. Two great days of training. Go to tstseminars.org. We do have a hands-on hybrid class. Uh, April, go look at the www.attts uh, training website. People come from all over the world.